Hey folks, this is Rob with Trey City Guns and Ammo, and it's freaking cold. So please excuse my breath in this video. If you hear a little background noise, I'm warming up my toaster oven because I'm getting ready to do a bunch of powder coating of uh, rounds that I'm going to be loading. And you know what? It just helps warm it up out here. Uh, Oregon is the middle of a pretty nasty cold snap, far colder than we normally ever get this time of year. And it's stinking cold. So I'm bundled up. We got some stuff going in the background, uh, so please excuse that and the constant fog. So, today what we're going to be taking a look at is my new Smith & Wesson Model 629-44 mag. Stainless steel, nice laminate grips, and a 3-inch barrel. Talk about a handful. Stick around. <laughs> All right, here we go on the uh, the tabletop with the 29. I'm sorry, the 629. Um, this gun has its roots in a very classic firearm, the Smith & Wesson Model 29, made famous by Dirty Hair. Well, do you, punk? Now, if you look, the Model 29 is blued, whereas the 629 is stainless, and that is what Smith & Wesson does when they have produced a gun um, in a blued configuration when they offer it up in stainless, they simply put a six in front of it. So the 29 became the model 629, and both are still readily available. Now, as you can see, this one has a rather short barrel. Um, this is basically made for like a, a concealed carry configuration. And this did come with a uh, holster, not from Smith & Wesson, but from the previous owner. I'm not the original owner of this gun. Um, it was really set up for concealed carry, along with having the, the shorter rounded uh, grips on it that also lends itself more to a concealed carry setup however if it was something that you wanted to do for rather cheap you can pick up one of these hogue monogrips um, it makes the grip just a hair longer it fills out your hand a little bit more and it's nice soft and cushy and you have rubber that covers that steel back strap and it does make a difference on the recoil. The recoil on this gun, as you can imagine, is definitely what I would call snappy. And when I say it's snappy, I mean two things. Number one, the recoil impulse is very quick and sharp, kind of like you're getting smacked in the hand with a uh, ball peen hammer. Um, it's a very quick, sharp recoil. <coughs> Pardon me. It is not a push. Um, a lot of bigger calibers tend to be more of a push when I'm shooting the 700 grains, 700 grain rounds in my 500 Smith & Wesson. Um, it it kind of hurts too, like you're getting hit in the hand, but it really is more of a push. Um, and the other thing that I mean when I say it's snappy, besides the rather short, quick, sharp recoil impulse, is muzzle rise. Um, so when you fire it, you, you very quickly get a little bit of a, a, a flip on the front of the barrel when you shoot. Um, so much so in this gun's case, when my, gun, my, when my son shot it, he gripped it, and when it fired, it rotated within his grip, and the cylinder catch hit right on the, the corner of the knuckle on his thumb and removed a layer of skin, uh, made him bleed a little bit, and he didn't really want to shoot it after that. Now, that's, that's partially because of the, the type of recoil that this gun has and having a rounded grip. There's more of a tendency to, for it to want to rotate within your grip. Um, that's not something that I have a problem with. I have bigger hands than he does, um, and I have a lot more grip strength. Um, I posted this up, pictures of this gun on a couple different forums, and everybody said, you're gonna need to put those hogs on it. That's what you're gonna wanna shoot it with. Um, I haven't shot it with the hogs. I've put 100 rounds through this gun, haven't put the hogs on it yet, and quite honestly, I, I may someday, but I don't intend to. I love these grips. It is sharp, um, but I'm, I'm fairly recoil insensitive. Uh, you know, I'm used to shooting a lot of big guns, and I kind of like to, I might sound kind of crazy, I kind of like the recoil. I like to know that I'm, I've got a hold of a, a powerful round. Um, 
and it's not it's not really that bad if you know how to mitigate some recoil and we'll do a video someday where we go out to the range and kind of show what i mean on how to kind of mitigate the recoil um but if you have a fair amount of experience uh, you should be able to shoot this without too much problem without too much pain um, if it is too much once again a set of these are like 20 bucks probably make a world of difference but those are so bland and blah looking these are gorgeous you know they're really nicely uh, carved here it's almost like a scale pattern so you get some good grip and you've got a little bit of finger grooves here uh, but then it's got such a nice finish and color to it I, I can't take these off this gun it's got to stay on here this this is probably I would consider this the prettiest gun I own I, I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I'd hate to, to change it and like I said I can handle it without a problem uh, going on to the the trigger I don't know if this trigger is stock or if it's been worked if it is stock I don't know what you're paying extra money for the performance center model for because this trigger is absolutely great got the trigger scale here so we're gonna test out the single action first and I've already done this several times so I kind of know where it's at but I'll do it for you here on camera we have let's see there we go I don't know if you can see it too well but it's three and three quarters of a pound and I was getting that really consistently. It was going anywhere between three and five eighths to three and seven eighths, but really right around three and three quarters of a pound, really super consistently. And let me zoom in here a little bit. And once it's in single action, the amount of actual trigger movement, there's no creep at all. Um, it's just an absolute solid wall until you put enough pressure on that it breaks. Um, yeah, I don't know what can be improved about that single action trigger. It's as crisp as it needs to be. It's light enough to be able to shoot very well. This, this is a very accurate gun, even for only a three inch barrel. Um, but yeah, nice light enough trigger pull to make it a good shooter at the range, but heavy enough to not have any accidents. You're carrying it concealed. Um, and then the double action, it's off the scale uh, poundage wise uh, that's just the nature of double action but it is incredibly butter smooth it's one of the smoother double action triggers I've ever felt including my performance center 500 magnum it's just absolutely smooth as silk like I said I don't know if this trigger has been worked um, maybe that's just because it's been well enough broken in Maybe it's been shot enough because the triggers actually do tend to improve with time. But that double action is absolutely butter smooth. I couldn't really ask for anything more in a gun that I, I intend to carry. Um, so yeah, taking a look at the, the three inch barrel, you do have a little bit of a loss of velocity. Um, maybe one of these days we'll, we'll shoot it over my chronograph and compare it to my my uh, inner arms virginian dragoon uh, that has a seven and three quarter inch barrel and see what the velocity difference is but it's a 44 mag and a 44 mag that's basically set up for concealed carry um, you know really how much velocity you need it, it, you're making a big big hole um, and you do have a loss of sight radius however the sights on this are really nice and I have no problem hitting the 25 yard gongs out at the gun club. Uh, if I can hit a, a six inch gong consistently at 25 yards with a gun that I can, I intend to conceal carry, I really don't feel like I can ask for more than that. Uh, off a bench, I'm sure I could hit the little three inch gongs just as well. Um, just a little tougher offhand. <laughs> uh, this came with some nice, nice stuff here. Came with some speed loaders. These speed loaders, they can be had for about ten dollars. Um, I found them all over the online. They're really kind of nice. I don't know if you if you've never messed with them. Literally, you've got all six year rounds there. They drop in, rotate it till it lets go of them, and there you go. You're fully loaded and ready to go. Just that easy. 
And these, these rounds all came from the previous owner. These were, you know, carry rounds that he bought. I got a whole box of them, but they're 44 specials. So I'm thinking that he was not a big fan of the amount of recoil that's in this gun. Maybe I'm just a freak. Um, cause I, I don't mind it. I don't think it's that bad, but yeah, these are all 44 specials and really for concealed carry where you're going to be shooting very short distances against a human sized target, 44 special really is enough. Um, I like shooting 44 Magnum cause I kind of like the wow factor. I kind of like the, you know, feeling like I'm, I'm handling a big bore gun. Um, so I may, I may continue to carry it with the specials cause I really don't need more for concealed carry, but we're definitely going to do a lot of loading of some heavy hitting, hard hitting 44 mags. And we're going to try this gun out against a bunch of different stuff. I have several different bullets. I'm going to be loading up. There's some nice Sierra, uh, hollow points, 240 grain. Um, those will be fun to shoot water jugs with uh, should make them blow up pretty well and shouldn't have too hard a time catching one of these and seeing how well they mushroom out probably do the same with one of those 44 specials then we have these uh 240 grain semi wad cutters that are powder coated these are cast bullets that i've i've cast up um that will load up and and this is what i i shot out of this gun the first time out was i, I shot a hundred of these um, max charges behind them. So I wasn't shooting powder puff rounds to try to get through hundred in this gun. Um, you know, 240 grain bullet with max load of powder. Um, it's no slouch, you know, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be a heck of a, a, a handful. Um, but like I said, it's, it's not that big a deal if you just are able to shoot, uh, well, if you've shot a lot and you've shot a lot of revolvers, you know how to mitigate the recoil. It's not too big a deal. These ones, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little worried about these. Um, these are 310 grain powder coated cast bullets that I made. And even in my seven and three quarter inch barreled revolver with Hogue monogrips on them, these kick like a freaking bay mule. So I don't know how many of these that will all actually shoot through this gun, but we're, we're going to do it. We're going to, we got to try it. You know, we got to, we, we can't, kind of sissy out and go the easy route we gotta we gotta shoot some big heavy bullets so we'll try those out and uh our next video with this gun we'll we'll shoot them all we'll shoot the hollow points we'll shoot the 240 grain cast we'll shoot the 310 grains and really see how punishing they are and we'll we'll shoot even the 44 specials and just see how they go so that'll be the next video you see this gun in but, you know, 100 rounds in, and I absolutely love this gun. I love the look of it. I love the feel of it. That grip is very, very comfortable in the hand. Um, and, man, is it pretty. All right, to sum up the, uh, the 629, um, in my opinion, the Smith & Wesson Model 29 or 629, uh, whichever route you decide to go, is about the best 44 Magnum revolver you can possibly get. Um, and then you just have to decide, do you want a 29 in blued steel or a 629 in stainless? And then they, there's a million different configurations of this gun. This little three inch barrel, uh, you could get a very similar gun in a performance center model that actually has only a, it's like a two and five eighths inch barrel. So that, I mean, that makes this thing look big. Um, and then you can go up to like an eight inch barrel. Uh, so there's a lot of different configurations. You just have to decide what your purpose is and uh, what you need and pick your gun accordingly. Um, I do intend on concealed carrying this probably more like a wintertime concealed carry. You know, when I'm wearing stuff like this, you know, stuff that's going to gonna hide it pretty well. Because um, even though it may look small, I mean, it, it's, it's actually still a big gun. I mean, even with a 3-inch barrel, that's a big gun. And it's got a lot of weight. Uh, so good holster, good belt, that absolute must. Um, but you know, I, I have to give it a 10 out of 10. I'm a big Smith and Wesson revolver fan. Um, I don't think you can hardly do any better. Uh, this is not a performance center model, but it still is, it, it sure seems like that kind of quality. I mean, the, the trigger, um, I don't know, maybe the trigger has been worked because it does have you know a performance center feeling trigger you know it's really really smooth very very crisp and single action and light 
Um, I can imagine needing to ever do any type of trigger job on this gun. It's just absolutely not necessary. Um, so yeah, model 29, model 629, I, I give it a 10 out of 10. Um, you know, the, the things that I would change about this gun are kind of impossible because I would maybe change how snappy it is. Uh, but there's a way to do that. You do a longer barrel and maybe a little bit bigger grip. But then that kind of gets rid of the whole purpose of this gun is that it's a small concealable 44 mag. You're not going to get a conceal, small concealable 44 mag without it being a little snappy. I mean, that's just how it is. At least it's not an airweight version. I mean, talk about feeling like you get hit in the hand with a ball point or a ball peen hammer. Um, this is probably rather tame as compared. Um, so you, you just have to know it's going to be snappy. That's all there is to it. Uh, 44 mag in a three inch barrel. That's just how it's going to be. A 44 mag in any configuration has a fair amount of recoil. It's probably not really a great beginner's gun, uh, but if you can handle the recoil and you know how to mitigate recoil, they sure are great. So if you're going to get yourself a, a 44 mag, determine your configuration needs for you know what you plan to use it for, buy accordingly, get yourself a 629, get yourself model 29. Um, either way, I, I don't think you can go wrong. It's all about what you want it to look like and how you want it configured for your purposes. So anyway, we've got a lot of really cool content coming up. I apologize, the video videos have not been super reliable as far as timing lately between my son's youth cow elk hunt and then we did his youth whitetail doe hunt, uh, both of them being hundreds of miles away from our home. So we had to do a lot of traveling, it made it very difficult to try to upload things on a regular basis, uh, but that's pretty much the end of it. Um, I have some hunts I'll be doing, but it'll be on the weekends. So it should not be an issue. Um, sorry folks, I got distracted by one of my pups trying to get into my shop. Apparently somebody's bringing them outside to go potty and they decided they wanted to come and visit me. Anyway, we've got some really great content coming up. Um, now that all the, the hunts are done and the traveling's done, uh, we should get back to kind of our, our normal schedule and you should see videos on a more regular upload. Uh, look down the description, you'll see links to our uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Patreon. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, you know, it costs money to do this. And right now I'm not making any money on this channel. I'm not yet monetized. Um, but this is a lot of fun and I want to bring you content. If you'd like to help out to make it easier to do bigger videos on a more regular basis, consider uh, becoming a, a Patreon member and contributing. I'd appreciate it tremendously. Um, and I, I appreciate just subscribing and watching the videos. I appreciate any and all support that you guys give me. Uh, it makes it worth continuing to do this and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So stay tuned for the next video. There'll be some shortly and I think they're gonna be a lot of fun. So thanks a lot folks. See you next time.